By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back once again in Japan, the beautiful Tokyo, and we're going to watch a final of their monthly meetup. I believe this is... Uh, was done in June, just before the summer break, and we've got two really good players going face to face here. We've got King D, I love this name, King D, and he's playing an ATOG deck, I believe it's red, blue, and has got some black splash, and he's taking on Tsubasa Cat, now that's a cool name, and he is playing a uh, Lion Serendip Burn deck, so mainly blue and red, I believe, but also some white in there as well, so really strong tier one decks. Now, uh, both of these players playing according to the Eternal Central Rules. That means we have four strip mines that are allowed in this format. We also have Mana Burn and you can play with Fallen Empires. Now, before I jump into the deck text, first a message from our sponsor, 3 for 1 Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old-school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 3 for one Trading for sponsoring this video. Okay, and we're back and ready to jump into those deck techs. I'm going to start with the deck of Tsubasa Cat and that is his Lion Burn Surrender deck. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Tsubusa Cat, and uh, I believe he is a, um, a well-known vintage player, so that's usually his jam. And as you can see, he's taking a step into old school, and uh, he has used some proxies here. So I believe proxies are allowed as well today at this tournament, because look at those dual lands, and look at the library. I believe they're all from the uh, online vintage set. I kind of forgot the name, but it's like an online set. So we have some alternative artwork going on here, but I'm sure I'm sure we can figure it out. It's a little bit harder for me. I'm so used to just seeing the beautiful old school art, but I can, you know, I can put on my modern glasses, I guess, or my vintage glasses and try to figure out what these cards are. So we see City of Brass under there. We see Mishra's Factory. We've got one strip mine, which is interesting because this is a four strip format. I think we'll just, you know, look at this deck. Of course, it's a very well-known deck in old school. You've got your Savannah Lions, Serenity, Freed, and Atog. That's your creature base. Very aggressive creatures that come out quickly. Then you're playing with a lot of burn, right? We see Chain Lightning, Lightning Bolt, Sionic Blast. So it's kind of... In that way, an easy deck to pilot, right? You're just going to burn your opponent out. You're going to turn your creature sideways as fast as you can. And, of course, if you start your hand with a black vice, you're probably going to play it out first because then you still get some value out of your vice. He's playing four black vices as well. Basically, everything in this deck hurts. And the cards that don't hurt are pretty much broken, right? We've got cards like Balance, Mind Twist, um, Time Twisters in here, I'm sure. I mean, what's going to be the biggest challenge for me looking at this deck is trying to figure out what the cards are because there's a lot of alternative art here. But I'm sure that I will survive. Um, this is just a really, really strong deck, by the way. Anyway, uh, we've looked at the deck now of Tsubasa Cat. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, King D. Okay, and here we see the deck of King D. Whoa, wow. If you thought the, the deck of Tsubasa Cat was brutal, look at this list. This is even more brutal. I mean... It's really an ATOC list, isn't it? We see a full play set of ATOCs in here, and we've got food for the ATOCs. We've got Ank of Mishras, we've got Black Vices, we've got all the Moxen in here. And this deck also plays the full play set of Strip Mines. So where we saw at the previous deck only one Strip Mine, this deck is playing all four Strip Mines. And what they have in common is they're both playing a lot of burn. They're both playing Surrender Befreeds. They're both playing Vices. So it's almost like a mirror match, but I think maybe this deck is even more brutal. And if I'm looking at these decks... These games are maybe going to last one minute, right? I mean, there's so much burn. They're just going to throw burn to each other and then it's going to be over. Uh, also, both decks do not have any life gain at all. So, I mean, I always think against these decks, if you have a little bit of life gain, like uh, with my Mono Blue deck, I started playing with Diamond Valley for that reason. If you have a little bit of life gain and a little bit of strategy on how to deal with direct damage, you can usually kind of wiggle your way out of it i do feel that in an eternal central format that's even harder because you've got those four strips so four strip mine is also really good for a burn deck because when you're a burn deck lightning bolt is one chain lightning is one black vice is one yes psionic blast is three but i mean that's also a doable mana uh, mana 
amount to, re to reach to. So all your spells are really cheap to cast. So yes, a strip mine is annoying for you, but not the end of the world. You can still kind of do your thing. Whereas when you're a control deck and maybe you've got more a life gain strategy, it's really tougher because a strip mine can really kind of uh, mess up with your plants, can really like like uh, damage your, your, your mana base, damage your curve. It's really tough. So playing against four strips with those type of decks is harder. So that's probably also why you're seeing more of these aggressive decks uh, in the Eternal Central meta. Anyway, um, this is looking really brutal. I have no favorite here. I don't know who's going to win this. If it's going to be Tsubasa Ket because his deck is brutal or if it's going to be King D and this is his deck, his deck is maybe even more brutal. I think if I'm looking at both of the lists, I kind of feel that King D maybe has the upper hand because he's playing with four strips um, and also because he's got a lot of food for the ATOC. I don't know. It's going to be so close. I have, I have actually have no idea. I have no idea. Both these decks seem super brutal to me. Anyway, uh, this is the deck of King D. We've looked at the deck of Tsubasa Cat, and that only means one thing. We are ready for the match. And remember, this is the finals of their monthly meetup. So it's always fun. So this is a final match after a full day of playing cards. So let's, uh, let's go and have a look at the match and see who's going to win this one. Game number one. Here we go. So on the left, we have Cat, and he's playing with um let's think about this white blue and red and also a splash of black and he's just playing with a lot of burn and four vices and all that stuff he's on the play here look at that starting with the vice passing the turn king is also playing a very aggressive deck he's a player on the right he's playing a blue and red a talk and also a splash of black but king taking three damage here dropping to 17 and let's see if he can empty his hand he's got a lot of cheap spells at the moment, so I wouldn't be surprised if he has a turn one play as well. Perhaps also a vice, although the vice wouldn't be as good because Cat only has five in hand now. Yep, there's the vice. There we go. So that means six in hand for King passing the turn. One damage here for Cat dropping to 19. And oh, there's a chain lightning. King dropping to 14. And I think it's going to take two more damage next turn. Oh, two more damage for King, already dropping to 12. This is going so fast. He really needs to empty his hand here. He is playing with all the mocks in, I believe, so it would be really good for him if he would just top deck a mox, drop the mox, drop a land, maybe play a lightning bolt or something, or a creature. There's a volcanic island, so two mana. I believe he still has six in hand. Ah, oh, passing the turn with six cards. That's no good. No damage for Cat here, I believe. There's another Chain Lightning. King dropping to nine. This is so brutal. Is there going to be an end step bolt? There's an end step bolt. So Cat dropping to 16. And I believe another damage. I believe King dropping to eight. Perhaps that's even two damage. It's kind of hard to see. But he's on eight or seven. I believe on eight. Gonna drop a land here, I assume has to empty his hand here. Yeah, I believe he took two damage actually, he's on seven. Gonna play a Volcanic, tap out here, or we're gonna see a Surrender Pafrit perhaps for three. No, there's a Mind Twist for two. So at least that's something, doing something back here. Only two, uh, four cards uh, in hand for Cat, so he's only gonna keep two of them. That's a Psionic Blast and a Psionic Blast, okay. Taking away some burn, and I believe five cards in hand now for King, who's on seven. Cat on 16. Oh, there's a surrender hitting the board. Passing the turn back here to King. So King's going to take a damage, I believe, drop it to six. There's a strip. Yeah, I mean, at this stage of the game, the strip is not going to do much. I think in this matchup in general, strip is not that great. Oh, there's also a surrender. Passing the turn to Cat. Cat, of course, taking a damage from his own surrender. And now we see uh, three cards in hand, by the way, here for uh, for King. So he's kind of out of the danger range with the Vice. But now he's got his own Surrender. Oh, he kind of has to block here. Are we going to see a Bolt? Yeah, there's a Fireball for one. Passing the turn back to King. So, I mean, if you're Cat, you could have decided to just let him keep the Surrender. But then again, that, that would be a very slow clock, I guess. Here's another strip mine. It's gonna strip another land. Now the strips are going to start to hurt for Cat. There's the pass. Cat taking a damage, gonna to drop to 14. 
But of course, he can now swing in with the Surrendip. Oh, there's a Psionic Blast, though. Does mean the King's going to take two damage as well. Drop to four. So from six to four. But wow, what an exciting first game here. King is kind of clinging on. I thought he was toast, but now on four, he is kind of stabilized. And I mean, four is still two bolts, not one bolt. There's a Soul Ring. There's a Wheel of Fortune. Oh, I'm a little bit surprised about this wheel. I'm a little bit surprised. Oh, there's a bolt as well in response. King dropping to one. And I mean, the reason I'm surprised here is that King is now drawing seven, meaning that that Black Vice is going to start working again. And I mean, he's so low. Then again, he is so low. So why not just go go full and take, take a risk? But I think this is the end of the road here after this wheel. So, of course, King really taking his time, trying to figure out, is there a way out of here for me? I believe he's on just one life. So, cannot play a Surrender, cannot play a Psionic Blast. He can play a, um, a City of Brass, but cannot use it or else he's dead. So, there's just a lot of dead cards in his deck. Oh, he's got Ancestral Recall. Oh, he's going to let him Ancestral Recall. Oh, that is funny. I would let him Ancestral Recall. Why not? He's on 14. Just try to deal as much damage as you can. Let him go up to 10 cards in hand. Why not? I mean, there's nothing that's really that can help you with that Ancestral Recall. And it looks like he's in the tank. You're trying to figure out what to do with this Ancestral Recall. Pretty interesting one, by the way. An altered one for sure. And players here are playing with proxies, so I'm not sure if it's a real deal or a proxy. Yeah, he's going to let him draw three. I love this move by King. This is so cool. King going up to 10. I love it, man. It's style points. Style points for sure. Passing the turn here over. So he's got 10 cards in hand. So he's going to take a whooping six damage from the vice. He'll drop to eight. Oh, that is so cool. So he'll drop to 8, I believe, which is pretty low, but I mean, it's not going to save King. Going to tap a City of Brass, so that means he's going to drop to 7. There's a bolt, end of the road. Yeah, he's picking up the cards. It was kind of end of the road anyway as soon as he played that wheel, but I do like it. I mean, you're trying to find a way out, and that Ancestral on Cat was, was really a King move, Mr. King. Anyway, uh, there's one game up here now for Cat. Both of these players are going to uh, dive into their sideboards and we will catch back up with them in game uh, number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's one game up for Cat. That means King is on the play and he has to win this one if he wants to win their monthly meetup. Starting with an underground seat, passing the turn. So no vice, no turn one plays here. Ooh, there's a mox by Cat. So he does have a turn one play. Does he also have a land? I'm sure he does. Lots of proxies here. This is hard. Is this a city of brass? Okay, it's a strip. So stripping away the underground sea, passing the turn. And that mox, could that be a mox pearl? Not quite sure what type of mox that is. There's a factory and a pass here by K uh, King. So both players not finding any vices. We saw vices, of course, a lot in that, uh, in that first game. There's a mistress factory here being played out by Cat and a pass. There's a strip, another strip, and this is usually what you uh, what you see a lot in these Eternal Central games at the start. It's just a lot of stripping back and forth. Usually these decks also play extra lands because of all those strip mines in the format. There we see a plateau being played out by Cat. Again, a proxy card. There's a Volcanic Island into an Atok. Okay, there's a creature on the board. We've got action, people. I wonder how long the creature is going to stick. But Cat's hand is not looking that impressive. I'm seeing a lot of lands in there. Now he's drawing into a Surrender. There's a Balance. There is a Chain Lightning. Could consider chaining the Atog. Gonna go for the Surrender Afrit instead. So 3-4 Flyer. From Arabian Nights. Does deal 1 damage to you during your upkeep. There we see a Bat Lance. Oh, I love this! Paralyzed! Taking down the Surrender while tapping it down. That means there is an attack here for uh, for King if he wants. It could boot Cat on 19 here. Let's let's see if he turns the Atox sideways. And I believe this uh, Paralyzed comes in from the sideboard. Pretty sweet card. 
There's the attack. What I really like about uh, Paralyze, it, it always gives you value, right? I mean, it taps down the creature, that's one. So usually you have like a free attack like uh, like right now. But also your opponent then eventually will have to pay an extra four to untap it. And here Cat dropped to 18, by the way, because of the Surrendip. So Cat on 18. Probably is going to play out a land maybe and go. Could go for the chain play still. That would be a consideration. Oh, actually taking back the, the, the land. Is he considering playing out the balance? I mean, he's got two lands, so playing a balance would mean that King would lose a land and a creature. But I mean, Ket's got a lot more cards in hand, so I think he would have to discard two or three cards. Two cards, I think. Anyway, there's the balance, so he is going for the balance play. He's gonna ditch two City of Brasses here. Knowing that he can make all the type of mana that he needs with those dual lands. There's a factory. And there's a chain lighting. Yeah, so really cleaning up the board here with that balance. And of course the chain together. So both Atox now gone for King. And King a little bit light on lands now, even for his deck. His deck doesn't need a lot of lands, but still, you know. Three is kind of the perfect number for him, I think. So he would prefer one more land. Just passing the turn here. Could have attacked with the factory, decided not to. Another damage here for Cat, so he'll drop to 17. He's going to untap the Surrender. Drawing card number two, passing the turn. And King's still on 20. Can he find another land, right? Get five cards in hand. Oh, just passing the turn. This is bad if you're Cat. Sorry, if you're King, this is not what you want to do in life. Cat, you're taking another damage. Gonna go to 16. Three cards in hand for him now. And there's a Bolt in there as well. And a Sayane Blast. So he is attacking with the Factory. Signaling to King that he's kind of got a Bolt. I wonder if King's gonna bite or just take the damage. Looks like he's just gonna take the damage. Drop to 18. Passing the turn here back to King. And I mean, if you're King, you really don't want to have another turn where you just pass. At least there's a land drop, so there's a factory hitting the board. Can he do something with the three mana? Okay, there's a Surrendip. That's pretty good. Passing the turn, so Cat taking another damage, dropping to 15. Drawing a card here. There's that white card. I wonder what that white card is. It's not, it's not a Savannah Lion, or else he would have played out already. Oh, it's an Enchant Creature. I think this is a Spirit Link. He's going to play Spirit Link. Wow. And that means King's going to take a damage and Cat's going to gain a life. So Cat's going to go up to 16. King going to go down to 17. Yeah, this is ideal here for Cat, the Spirit Link. That also is going to negate kind of the damage that he takes from his own Surrender, right? Because he's going to drop to 15, but the turn after he's going to go back up to uh, to 16 again. So he's going to stay on a steady 16 if nothing changes. So King taking a moment. He's on 17. Just passing the turn, it seems, or not. He is just passing the turn. Ay, ay, ay. And look at that hand, by the way, of Cat. What's that white card in there? That's like next level proxy. <laughs> I have no idea what that card is. I do know that King is kind of in trouble here. Or, I mean, is he? I mean, he's kind of stuck. Let me put it that way. He's not moving forward. Okay, there's the ATOG here by Cat. Because Cat's kind of, you know, working on his board and King hasn't been doing much. There's an end step psionic blast on the life total here of Cat, it seems. So he's going to drop to 11. Two points of damage for King, 15. Then take a point of damage from his own surrounded 14. Then one life for Cat, 12. Wow, keeping track of this, these lives is kind of tough. There we see a Mox Sapphire, also a proxy, I believe. But this is an interesting game. I mean, 
The life totals ping ponging up and down. And I think Cat's turn is going to be interesting to see what he's going to do. Is he going to just start attacking, for example? He's got some burn in hand. So Cat's on 12 at the moment. King is on 14. Ooh, there's a bolt. I believe he's going to drop to 11. So King's on 11. Cat's dropping to 12, I think. Drawing a card for turn. This is a Van Alliance, I think, that white card. Yeah, that's Alliance. He's going to play out this Van Alliance 2-1 vanilla creature. The card next to it is an Atog, I think. So 1-2. And of course, he has the Surrender Afrit as well. On end step. Oh, another Psionic Blast on the life total of Cats. He's going to drop to 7. King's going to drop to 9. Then, of course, he's going to gain a life again from the Surrender of King. King's going to take it and he's going to drop to 8. So both players, I believe, are right now on 8. That is pretty funny. So both players on 8. There's a Strip Mine. Stripping away the factory. In response, Cat could play the Psionic Blast, but if he does, he would go to six. King would go to four, though. Might be worth it. No, he's just gonna let it happen. There's a Time Twister, wow. Oh, changing his mind. Yep, there's the Time Twister. So playing out the Time Twister. Oh man, what a second game here. Now remember, King has to win this one. He's down a game, right? Ket won the first one. So if Ket can win this one, he's won the uh, the monthly championship. 8-8, eight, eight. both players on 8. Both players have decks full of burn, so it's very risky. I really like the Spirit Link by Ket, by the way. I think that's a, that's a great, great move. Could have also decided to put the Spirit Link, of course, on his own Surrender. And now both players cutting each other's decks. I'm going to draw a fresh 7. Oh, what's going to happen now? Ooh, the balance is back in hand there for Ket. I can see that. So King starting off with a Mox, Sapphire, a Mox uh, Pearl. Playing a City of Brass here. And now he's thinking, can I get Cat from 8 to 0 in this turn? That's a big question, of course. Ooh, Chain Lightning, Chain Lightning on the Lion. Taking back the land, okay. Did he already play out a land? I don't think so, I'm not sure. Just taking all the cards back now, trying to... Reanalyze, I guess, the board state and what to do. Again, cat's on eight, so could also consider putting the chain to the dome, putting him on five. Then again, five is not dead, and also king is on eight, so he probably has to take care of some of the creatures here. So it's actually not a bad idea to chain the creature, but look at that, just passing the turn. So another damage for Cat here is going to drop to 7. I mean, I think I would have fired off the Chain Lightning. Don't know, of course, what else is in his hand. Maybe he's got a Bolt in there as well. Wants to wait uh, Wants to wait and see first maybe what Cat's going to do. Cat's just going to go all in here. And now let's see how King is going to use his own Surrender Befreed. What is he going to block? Remember, Surrender Befreed has a Spirit Link on it. So, for example, if he blocks the Surrender Befreet with the Surrender Befreet, then Cat is going to gain 3 life, would go back up to 10. So, we'll just have to wait and see what the players are going to do. Yeah, he's going to put it in front. So, that means Cat's going to go up to 10. Oh, and then he's going to sack 
the artifact to the ATOC in response there's that blue elemental blast taking care of the ATOC so King is gonna take two damage dropping to six and I think this is well played by the way oh there's a chain gonna go to three there's another chain that's it end of the road oh man I was hoping for game number three because actually these games were pretty pretty tense I really enjoyed uh, the second game, I loved seeing the Spirit Link, I loved seeing the Paralyzed coming in. Those cards really are so good against the Surrender Befreeds and they can really make a difference. Uh, but yeah, this was this was a lot of fun. I would like to thank uh, Nicola again, of course, the uh, the organizer of these events. He lives in Tokyo, Japan, a Frenchman living there. And he sends me these videos every once in a while. I'm really enjoying them because, they, you know, they're so different. And that is, that is the fun of it, you know, just to see how people play old school in different parts of the world. Here we see the winning deck, so congratulations, uh, Kat, for winning this here. And also, thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. If you enjoy what you see, please consider leaving a like, sharing it on your socials, and leave a comment. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And talking about moving forward, you can also become a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks for all the information. And when you become a patron, the cool thing is you can then join our online Discord community and you can join into, uh, into our online tournaments as well. And your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?